Hello everyone, Robert Earl White with the Order of Light here today to talk about Bill Cooper, former U.S. Naval Intelligence. Now he witnessed something on a submarine back in 1966 that is very similar to what the modern day UAP footage that was released by the Navy, the same exact movement from these craft and also they were going in and out of the water. This is a remarkable interview, so please make sure you subscribe like and share thank you so much and i hope that you enjoy the show in a universe with so many unanswered questions the vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstripe our collective comprehension we will shed light onto the darkness. We will explore the universe to find what is really out there. We are the disclosure. We are the order of light. While we were on a transit from the Portland, Seattle area on the surface, I actually saw, I was the port lookout, uh, and I saw the most incredible thing that I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and it, and it had such a profound effect upon my view of the universe and the world that we live in um, that I wish everybody could experience this. I saw come up out of the ocean from beneath the surface of the sea a huge disc-shaped craft about the size of a midway class aircraft carrier which is tremendous in size. Uh, even though that's one of our smallest carriers there was then, um, it's still a huge tremendously big object. Came up out of the ocean and rose into the air and tumbled on its axis and went up into the clouds and I was awestruck, dumbstruck. And uh, I mean dumbstruck, literally I could not utter a sound. Uh, and my first um, impulse was to tell the officer of the deck that I'd seen a flying saucer and then luckily for me I couldn't talk uh, because on second thought that's not what I really wanted to say. Uh, because I didn't want to be the only Looney Tunes character on a submarine with a tight-knit crew that you had to live close in close quarters with, uh, uh, because that's uh, that's a hell of a way to live. So I told the officer deck that I'd seen something about 15 degrees off the port bow at a relative distance of about two and a half nautical miles, and uh, uh, he began to look in that area, and the starboard lookout had heard me tell him this and he began to look over there and while we were all three watching uh, either the same craft or another one exactly like it came down out of the clouds tumbled again on its why it did this maneuver I don't know but every single time it did it it's like it came down in this attitude and then it flipped over and then entered the water uh, and the water just appeared to open up in front of it it's just like the, the account in the, in the Bible about the parting of the Red Sea that's exactly what happened. The sea actually parted and this thing went into the water and it closed up behind it. And this big spray went up into the air. But it wasn't a spray from the craft hitting the water. It was a spray from the water coming back in to fill up this hole that had been created. And um, again, you know, I'm thinking this, this is incredible. It's, what are we looking at here? And it was metal. It was a machine. And, and uh, it wasn't glowing or anything like that. It didn't have any lights on it that we could see. Um, but it was obviously metal, and it was obviously a machine. And uh, although I can't tell you that there was anyone inside of it, I believe that there was. Um, and it did something that, that, as far as I knew, was absolutely impossible. I'd been in the Air Force. I'd worked on the state of the art of our, of our uh, aviation capabilities, and here I was on the deck of a submarine in the conning tower and I knew what we had to be able to have to go underwater and I knew that the two were incompatible. Here's something that came from under the water and flew in the air and performed maneuvers and then came back down and interfaced with the water at tremendous speed uh, and remained intact, uh, which realistically it, it, it never touched the water. The water sort of magically opened up in front of it, but something had to interface with that water. Anything that we had that interfaced with the water in that manner would have been disintegrated. It's like hitting a brick wall. So I was looking at a technology 
that as far as our laws of physics and what we knew at that time didn't exist. This was in 1966. Uh, and um, Ensign Ball was uh, as shocked as I was. He called the captain to the bridge. He came up with the chief quartermaster who brought a camera. And uh, we all stood there and watched this occur over and over again for about 10 minutes. And I still to this day don't know if it was the same craft or a whole bunch of different craft going in and out of the water. But it seemed like that there was a hell of a lot of traffic on that freeway right there. <laughs> and we were watching it as we went by. We never changed course. We never lowered or, or increased our speed. Uh, we made no attempt to communicate or signal. Uh, we made no attempt to get closer. Um, and eventually uh, it just stopped. 